This is the Fifth Estate Winning Headlines, your media police post. In this segment, we summarize some of the headlines that you might have missed this morning, and we also take a look at the political pieces we call cartoons in this country. Today is the 18th of March, 2020, and I am DM. I am Tuam. And I am JM. In case you missed the headlines this morning, mm. here they are. Yep. Negative test, woman rushed back to ward. Mm. Mm. U.S. tests COVID-19 vaccine as Kenya reports fourth case. Mm -hmm. That's the star. Yeah. Mm. And in the standard, freeze taxes to save Kenyans, mm. MPs tell Uhuru. Yes. yes. So we're uh, back on coronavirus and how to deal with it. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. The nation is uh, telling us about this lady who had tested positive for coronavirus, mm -hmm. was in treatment and isolation. Yeah. And then on Sunday, mm. she was allowed to leave isolation, yeah. presumably because she had recovered. Yeah. But she developed symptoms, flu mm. symptoms that same night. Mm. She tried to call the hotlines and could not go through. Mm. So she ordered a taxi went to hospital and was readmitted. Now, no. there's so many layers yeah. in this mm. story, yeah, or yeah, yeah. so many things that this story <coughs> tells us. Yeah. Number one is that perhaps we do not have a proper understanding of this disease. Yeah. Mm. That is why she was let out of isolation. Yeah. Yeah. Number two, she called the hotline and it was not going through. Mm. Wow. So far, we are at how many cases? Now, plus three, seven. Seven cases mm. yeah. only. I can yeah. say only. Yes. But already, yeah. the systems in place are yes. not working as they should. So that is mm. problematic. Mm. And then she took a taxi to hospital. Yeah. Yeah. Did the taxi driver remain in hospital to get checked or mm. at least mm. leave his name mm. Um, mm. in order that he may be monitored? Or did the lady even disclose to the taxi driver mm. that I am actually a coronavirus So patient? a lot of things are falling through the cracks. They are, and it uh, leaves a lot of questions. Yeah. It leaves us with a lot of questions about how we are handling the situation. Yeah, yeah. We must say, though, that the, the, there couldn't be a better time to have the CS for Health, uh, Mutahi oh, Kadwe, yeah, in cabinet yes. in such a position. Yes, I because think so he is too. politically competent. Can yes. you imagine if we had? one of the technocratic uh, cabinet ministers currently in cabinet. Mm, mm. This could be a disaster in terms of the public relations yes. and communication with the public. Yes, Absolutely. yes. Um, Kagwe does inspire a lot of confidence. confidence. Oh, yeah. And uh, he, he has 10,000 hours he when does. it comes to uh, public communications, delivering yes. speeches, yeah. even when yeah. it is not yeah. good news. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. He was, he's telling us, yeah. do not panic, yes, exactly. but take this seriously. Le and and exactly. let me tell you, I think he's really enjoying this. As, as much as it's serious, <laughs> he's really enjoying this. And you know why, guys? The, li the limelight. Yeah. Because as much as, as much as I know, yes, we have corona, uh -huh. but in a short while, we'll be going back to politics. Yeah. There's a new game of king being constructed, uh, in my view, uh, and his name is uh, Mutai Kagwe. Uh, and actually, probably the jealous fellow in cabinet in right the next now. two weeks it's will be Tiangi. but Tiangi because <laughs> the rival yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know. but the, so, the so formation of the kingpin yeah. is highly dependent yes. on how he leads us through this corona Yes, and, and, you, and you know what the, what they say: never yeah. waste a crisis. Never waste, never waste a crisis. And he's not wasting. And he it. is milking he's, this one. He's enjoying. Yeah. Anyway, I anyway, hope it makes a hero. Back, him. back, back to Corona. We have a three-part criteria that we use to assess the headlines. Yeah. Are they topical or speculative? Yeah. Repetitive or groundbreaking? And finally, thoughtful or just plain lazy? lazy. Mm. Uh, I think it's a rather technical headline. This mm. one of the nation. Yes. Informative but technical. So I think we toss I it. Think, I think. I think. Yeah. We toss it. Yeah. Okay. And then we can move on to the the star. Yes. Uh, U.S. tests COVID. 19 vaccine as Kenya reports fourth case. Yeah. So mm. good news and bad news here. Yeah. The good news is that the US uh, tested uh, the first vaccine yesterday mm. yeah. on, uh, uh, on an American mm. yes. um, and they intend to test about 45 individuals to yes. see whether the vaccine will work yes. uh, for a number of days. Yeah. Uh, but even then, yeah. the bad news there is that it takes on average between two to five years yeah. for a vaccine to, to actually be, to be, uh, be, be approved, yes. to be produced, yeah. mass produced, yes. and to reach our shelves. Yes. So in short, yeah. this virus is with us yes. for the next two or so years yes. at a minimum. At a minimum. Yes. At a minimum. Yeah. Um, uh, also, we have been told by the CS for Health that... Uh, we, 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 we had our fourth co case of coronavirus uh, reported yesterday. Yeah. That's been added, so there's a few more today. Brings it up to seven. Yeah. Um, and, and here, I want to just uh, 
talk a little bit about social distancing. Yeah. Why are we doing it? Yes. We are doing social distancing so we can flatten the curve. Yes. Yeah. Right? And we are flattening the curve yeah. so that we don't overwhelm yes. the health sector. Right. Because what tends to happen and what we've seen in a country like South Korea and Italy yeah. Yeah. is when you get everybody out there uh, walking around and people have this virus, mm. yeah. uh, then they end up infecting others. Yeah. Yeah. And before you know it, you have you know, tens of thousands of people yeah. in hospitals. Yes. Mm. Uh, in a country like ours, where yeah. we have limited number of ICU yes. facilities, oh, yeah. limited number of beds in hospitals. Yeah. Even in America, they have very limited yeah. number of beds. Yeah. In addition to their bath, bad healthcare system, they have Absolutely. less than a million beds. You end up overwhelming you know the yeah. health sector, sector yes. and then you end up also having what you call avoidable deaths. Yes. So people coming in with kidney uh, failure, failure yeah, people coming disease. in with cancer, yeah. diabetes. Yeah. Accidents at home. Accidents at home yeah I mean and these things will continue to happen as we have corona yeah. Yeah. now if if you if you filled the hospital with people with corona, corona yeah then you know all these other people are that's not going to be, be served and that's the kind of thing that actually leads to social disorder mm. yeah. when you just to elucidate father when you say flattening the curve yeah you're talking about a graph yes yes with a line showing the trajectory of corona infected people yes so the as infections continue the graph continues to climb absolutely but then it falls upon now us as individuals more than governments mm. to practice self-distancing yeah. in order that we do not spread the disease absolutely. and the trajectory starts changing yeah yeah and flattens absolutely downwards absolutely. or at least plateaus it plateaus and then goes yes downwards, downwards. Yeah. instead of having a very high peak yes. high peak yeah. and the high peak is where mm. we will fall into crisis yeah yeah because we will not have enough we do not have the infrastructure globally precisely yeah. to have everybody yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. in hospital and at the same time caring for those people who have pre-existing conditions <coughs> and other conditions that will emerge absolutely and it's, absolutely it's it's it's, it's you understand something. And, and so just before you come in with a standard mm. um, what we're basically being told is that coronavirus is getting corona is a question of when not if, if. That is so true. And this is probably why the MPs are telling uh, the president something here. You know, they're, 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 they're telling uh, government, the president, freeze taxes to save Kenyans. Uh, this word MPs told Uhuru. And mm. what? I agree with them. I, and what the standard is saying is we should probably have a stimulus package that cushions Kenyans from the harsh economic times that are coming. Mm. And uh, this is actually reminiscent of 2008. We actually had a stimulus package when Uhuru Kenyatta was finance minister. And the thing was about $275 million. Yeah. Now, look, uh, it is good to say that we need a stimulus package and we need economic measures. But it is also good to suggest that uh, let us not follow just the West in how they rendered their, their economic packages. We can also tailor make them for ourselves. So the, for the US, for example, they cut the US Federal Reserve rate to about 0 to 0.25%. Mm. The French have cut taxes. Mm. Now, I don't see a problem of us telling everywhere, we shut down industrial area in Nairobi, yeah. tell the workers, go back to your labor camps, you quarantine those areas proper, put them under lockdown, and then you come into agreement with the, the factories and mm. you tell them that we, you shall give a stipend, a daily stipend to your workers. In return, you will get tax rebates, mm. right? Mm. Then you, pack up, you partner up with the uh, with private sector, yeah. Yeah. and you come up with things like food packs, yeah. uh, food packs. So you sell two bills of unga, I mean, two ungas and uh, soap and uh, oil, mm. uh, to ensure that they don't come out of their houses, mm. right? Mm. And this mm. will be given every single day. Mm. You have to tackle this problem mm. like nobody has mm. tackled it before. And there's also donor money that yes. can support some of these initiatives it, uh, uh, on the part of government. Absolutely, yeah, and, yeah. And, and Prof likes to say only the paranoid survive we mm. need to start be being paranoid because if this thing spreads to the slums this we mm. will know yeah. Yeah. Well this. yes mm. i think yeah i think your to m your suggestion is very drastic yeah but it's very necessary it is necessary. Yeah. for this reason yeah uh, JM here is telling us that we need to practice social distancing yeah. in order to flatten the curve and that's yeah. the only hope that the world has. Yeah. But how do you practice social distancing yeah. in the informal settlements Absolutely. where proximity to your neighbor is yeah. almost yes. in existence, you're yeah. living side to side, but yeah. also yeah. you're sharing facilities like yeah. ablution blocks. Yes. Mm. 
so quarantining yeah. does cannot happen yeah. at an individual to level, level yes. but Absolutely. at an area yes yeah. Yeah. i mean we level. cannot say uh, social distancing I, and i have heard uh, uh, president who talking about this and motai kagwe yes it is a good concept yeah. but who is your audience? Yeah. Your audience is, yeah. is, is, is people who publish yeah. by themselves. At, at yeah. I think many yeah. of us actually cannot afford, yeah. we cannot afford social distancing. Yes. Because if I am a hawker yeah. and I live, I get my provisions every day yeah. from my proceeds mm. of the day, then mm. how am I going to sustain myself and mm. my family? Mm. Yeah, absolutely. And I also live in a place where there is... Um, yes. Yeah, I tell you. Everybody is living side and by this side. This is why there's a prayer day on Saturday. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, look, I think we give it to the standard. Or I, 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 I think so. I would do. I would give it to the standard. Yeah. So we toss that. Yes. So, on to the political pieces that we call cartoons in this country. We also have a three-part criteria that we use to judge the cartoons: mm -hmm. are they humorous or dry, satirical or pessimistic? And finally, effective or just plain lazy. <laughs> In the star. Yeah. In the star, Ozone has drawn a political group yeah. looking at the COVID virus, yeah. which has been entangled <coughs> in uh, electric cords yes. that has unplugged. Yes. And it says reggae has been mm, stopped. Posed, posed, posed has yes. been posed. Yeah. So I, the interpretation here yeah. is that uh, I think this is a public address <laughs> system yeah. that is not being used anymore because public gatherings are not allowed. And Absolutely. this yeah. is the BBI <laughs> is the reggae and yeah. it has been posed yeah. by I the virus. I, I love how the virus has entangled itself yes. uh, yeah. with yeah. the cord of the PA system. S special yeah. mention to William Bruto there holding a Bible, yeah. maybe but, suggesting yeah, that it's his prayers that stopped it. <laughs> 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 well, I, I, there's something I want to say about this. Jonathan, you mentioned, mm. uh, you, you, you spoke about the National Prayer Day. Yeah. yeah. And I just had a brainwave. You see, Uhuru Kenyatta uh, talking <coughs> and announcing to Kenyans that he will do, uh, a there will be a National Prayer Day at State House. He has said something, and I think he's about to do something crazy. Mm. His idea, he, I don't think he really wants a prayer day. Mm. I think this is going to be a third, third mm. handshake between him and William Ruto. Really? It's, it's idea to bring, he, he's going, uh, this is Uhuru Kenyatta's opportunity to reset Kenya. Mm. And if he's going to reset Kenya, then he has to do things differently. How mm. is that prayer day going to look like in state house yet public gatherings are not allowed? Yes, is it I'm a, actually is wondering. It a prayer Aren't you supposed to be praying in isolation? I think maybe they'll put like uh, this, uh, what are they, these things that uh, uh, they blow people with uh, antiseptic uh -huh. at the gate of state house, uh -huh. and then they'll all come and they'll start hugging. I mean, they, they'll, they'll do this Indian yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, but yeah. for as long as long as William Bruto is there, then I think what so he wants to build is I think that would confidence. be misadvised because visually you're also supposed to give directive and follow it. You can't yeah. start giving gatherings. So, so, once, gatherings. so once again, you, you're telling us uh, a crisis here is he, not being wasted. Uhuru is not going to waste a crisis. Let's see. He's not going see. to waste this. Let's see. What do we have in the Daily Nation? Ndula has drawn a soccer setting. Yeah. I think uh, two M. We are better describing this. I don't know <laughs> because yeah. Yeah. anything about <laughs> because soccer. It's, it's football. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! It's such a horrendous cartoon. It's Ndula and uh, the last line of defense. Now, when you when um, this the, this three guys here yeah. is, is the sanitizer, uh -huh. that's the tap, and that's the soap. And, and soap. And uh, the ball is the coronavirus. Mm. And yeah. We've got a goalkeeper here who's masked in a, in a, in a, this uniform for DCI. Yeah. Uh, forensics for it, yeah and the guy has taken a free kick this is called a free kick so when you get a free kick you get a wall mm. and the wall is the three of them sanitizer tap and soap mm. but so uh, the ball is the coronavirus the and he has gone through he has, <laughs> he, he has he managed has to go the through the line of defense. to go through the line of defense but has so it's only the mask and, and uh, goalie. yes so the mask goalie is uh, is now you know probably probably the health sector uh, yes it's mutahe kagwe in that uh, in that yes, suit yes, yes. yes. it's actually not a bad cartoon it's not a bad yeah. cartoon it's not a bad yeah. cartoon yeah. Yeah. in the standard we have gado who has drawn a series of pictures. Yeah. The first one is sneezing, check. Yeah. Hand washing, check. Sanitizer, check. Social distancing, check. Yeah. Greetings, check. Official communication, check. Misinformation, check, as in throwing it away. And then action. I like this cartoon because it's constructive. Yeah. Yeah. And this is a time when we need um, information that is less uh, entertaining, yeah. but more productive. Yes. So I think we give it to the standard. I think give it to the standard. Fantastic. Absolutely. So, and so, so, so it is, it's a standard then? It is a standard. And the nation. Actually, and you give it to the nation. The winning cartoon to the nation. Correct? All right. Yeah. So what is our winning? What is, sorry, what is our <laughs> final thought? 
And now our final thought. It is inspired by a book entitled The Logic of Violence in War by mm. Stathis Kalivas. We did this book on, uh, today is Wednesday, we did yes. it on Monday. Yes. But it's going to inspire a war that Kenya has been before. And yeah. this was called The Shift to War. Yeah. Like to give us a summary? So the Shifta War was a secessionist conflict mm. that began in 1963 and came to an official end in 1967 with the signing of the Arusha Memorandum of Understanding yeah, yeah. between the president of Somalia, Mohamed Ibrahim Igal, and yeah. our president, our first president, <coughs> Kenyatta. Yeah. Now the theater of war was the Northern Frontier District, which we now know as, which is now known as the North Northeastern. Yes. The region is predominantly inhabited by people that are ethnically Somali, yeah. and it was at that time, yeah. and they were the ones who were calling to secede and join Greater Somalia. Yeah. So it is the Kenyan government actually that named this secessionist war the Shifter, Shifter. War, yeah. mm. and the shi and Shifter means bandit yeah. uh, in Somali, mm. and of course this was an effort to delegitimize uh, the efforts yeah. of the of the insurgents yeah, yeah. so the secessionist insurgents were backed by Somalia yeah. and they call themselves the Northern Frontier District mm. Liberation Movement yeah. FDLM yeah and FDLM yeah the government declared a state of emergency mm. immediately at the beginning of the war in 1963 yeah and it allowed the government to do a lot of things that it otherwise would not have in a normal uh, conflict yeah. Yeah. or civil conflict situation. Yeah. For instance, with a state of emergency, um, the government could detain people, particularly leaders, for up to 56 <coughs> days mm. without trial. Yeah. They could also confiscate property yeah. or destroy property yeah. as a retaliation for any um, acts of violence. Yeah. And. Uh, the hanging yeah. or um, what's it called the death penalty yes. was made mandatory yes. mm. for anybody who was found with uh, weapons, weapons or unauthorized um, guns yes. so you can see the government really came down hard, hard. Yeah. they unleashed the uh, GSU yeah, yeah. the GSU to the insurgents yeah. and for that reason to this day yeah. Uh, this is a very problematic point yes. um, in our history. Yeah. The government put out the official figures of fatalities at about a thousand, but other sources, including the TGRC, yeah. puts it at uh, seven thousand. Other sources up to uh, tens of thousands mm. um, wow. of death. Wow. So, if we look at the Shifter War and we tie it into the book that we read on Monday, yeah. Yeah. the logical violence in mm. war, mm. two things. Mm. There was both selective and indiscriminate violence. Yeah. Yeah. The selective violence, of course, was uh, coming from the insurgents because right. the object of aggression was the government. Yeah. And uh, the selective, mm. the in indiscriminate violence, mm. and this is arguable, yeah. mm -hmm. was coming from the government mm. because a lot of mm. men, women, children, even people who are not part of the yeah. uh, NFDLM did lose their lives. Yeah. And then there was extremely high privatization of violence we talked about this uh, on yeah, monday yeah. yeah and citizens privatize violence yeah. when they see that their cause yeah. calls for mm. the picking up of, of arms, arms. Mm. and and giving it the ultimate price which is uh, their lives yeah. and for the somali people it mm. was um the kenyan somalis yeah. was dif disenfranchisement mm. and marginalization mm. and this feeling of not having a a nationality yes. or uh, the absence of nationalism yes. and we see this in other uh, yes. secessionist wars in the world yeah. like yeah. the the kurd people where yes. there are kurds in different sides of the borders yeah. we speak the same language we have the cu same culture so yeah. we are one nation but separated Se by yes. state yeah. mm. Mm. Oh, it's an identity mm. crisis of sorts mm. you know uh, when i was um, doing my research on this thing the shift mm. war i said to myself, there must have been a, an original sin. What was the original sin in this case? And it would be foolhardy to think that the shift of war happened in a vacuum. Mm. Uh, no, it did not. It had a beginning, it had a genesis. Mm. And the original sin was the isolationist agenda by the British colonial government, yeah. which they applied on the NFD area. And that time, I mean, like up to now, it's about 102,000 square kilometers. That's a huge area. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, the colonial rule of the Somalis was not as brutal as it was on, on, on central Kenya, for example, mm. or the Rift Valley. Mm. And this is primarily because of uh, three reasons. First was the Somalis had acquired arms well before even the Brits had come. 
into yeah. into, into context yeah. Yeah. and this made them fearsome plus they also were galvanized by islam and a clan system second the climate was also very hostile mm. all right and nothing grew there it was it was a desolate place nothing could grow there uh, nothing could grow there the area was largely unproductive oh. and because of these two factors by virtue of uh, these two factors you had uh, about 100 british colonial police situated in nfd 100 of them that was just a long leash to keep them all together mm. uh, but uh, in essence if they decided to rise up then they would mess up with them. they would overwhelm them yes now come 1936 <coughs> the british government created something called the closed districts ordinance Yes, right? and this sought to isolate NFD people, largely mm. Somalis, mm. Uh, from other parts of of, of, of Kenya, like yeah. Central Kenya. And the belief by the British colonial government then was that if you let Somalis mix, probably the Kikuyus, mm -hmm. probably the Maasai, mm -hmm. the anti-colonial feeling and sentiment would have grown would much higher. See, all right? I and uh, I mean, having the Somalis with guns, then they would have knocked uh, things out. Yeah, yeah. Now, if you were to now have that kind of history back and uh, relate it to what's happening now, mm. uh, well, even before 1926, the, this ordinance thing came to be, the British government actually gave this, the Italian government, all, all the way up to, the, to, to, to Juba in Somalia, mm. uh, that kind of, that, that territory. That territory. And, that's, and, and that territory from Juba to the Soma kenya somali border is actually what gives us our border now. Mm. Now, up to today, should we uh, trace back our history, mm -hmm. then you can see how government has largely treated that part of the world. Yeah. And we have a concept here we call state abstinence and state absence. Mm. Now, the state has been absence in uh, NFD for largely good reasons. They have learned from the Brits. They have uh, the, this abstinence by the state mm. in the Somali region because I mean, what do you get from yeah. For, yeah. For, from yeah. that area? There's very little economic activity. Mm -hmm. Now, you can see there is a progression from the colonial administration Absolutely. to the current administration. To the current administration. Yeah. yeah. And you're referencing the book, The Monopoly to Oligopoly of Violence. violence. Oh. Absolutely. By uh, Professor Mutai yeah. uh, Really uh, good concepts there. Yeah. Um, I'll talk about a, a, an episode yeah. uh, that shaped Kenya's... In fact, this episode really yeah. shaped yeah. Kenya's foreign uh, policy yeah. at inception. Okay. And this is something that has been written about by historians. Yeah. Um, I'll draw mainly from the work of uh, John Kamau, who writes for the Daily Nation. Yeah. Good historian. Yeah. And he talks about the Sandys Agreement, yeah. Yeah. Uh, or what was eventually uh, known as the Bamburi Understanding. Yeah. Right. And so um, the archives show us that uh, uh, at Independence, we mm. had a small and under-equipped army that was no ma match for that uh, <coughs> of Somalia. Yeah. So to safeguard the country, Jomo Kenyatta tasked Bruce Mackenzie and Charles Njondro mm. to negotiate a military deal with Britain. Yes. But as it later turned out, yeah. this military deal was a completely vague one. Yeah. And so apparently during the shifter crisis, mm. we relied only on a gentleman's agreement yeah. uh, with Britain for her support yeah. should we be invaded yes. by Somalia, yeah. uh, should the shifter crisis grow yeah. into mm. something bigger than it was. Yeah. And so in 1964, uh, Jomo's government requested for a squadron of hunter aircraft and BAC strike masters oh. for the military to tackle the shifter crisis. Yes. But in response, the then Secretary of State for Commonwealth Relations, yeah. a guy called Duncan <coughs> Sandys, yeah. bless not you. Corona. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He told us we couldn't afford them. Yeah. And so what Sandys did instead is yeah. to give us verbal reassurance yeah. that Britain would come to Kenya's aid yeah. if it was attacked by Somalia. Yeah. And that's what was uh, known as the Sandys uh, understanding. Yeah. But that wasn't good enough for Kenyatta. Yeah. Uh, so a few months later, he tasked, uh, again, uh, James Gishuru, Joe mm. Murumbi, and yeah. George Mackenzie to go to London. Yeah. And they spoke to the British Prime Minister then, known as Harold Wilson. Yes. Yeah. Wilson. Um, listened to the two yeah. and uh, he decided to formalize yeah. uh, in due course yeah. uh, what was known as the Sandy's understanding. Yeah. Uh, so he sent his uh, British High Commissioner here in Kenya, yeah. mm. a guy by the name Edward Peck, yes. um, to go to Bamburi, yeah. uh, where Kenyatta's house was at the time, yeah. and to give him a written assurance yeah. that Britain would intervene if Kenya was under threat uh, from Somalia. Yes. But that came uh, really towards the end in 1967. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, this threat uh, of the shifter uh, yeah. war for Kenya yeah. had, had uh, materialized in 1964. Yeah. So for about three years, yes. we were really uh, no living person. by the grace of God, yeah. living by faith. Yes. Because I tell you, had we been invaded, yes. 
uh, by, had we been invaded by Somalia, yeah. which I think at the time was uh, backed by the Soviet the Union, Soviet yes. Union. Yes. you know, had a bit of support from the Italians. Yeah. We would have been overpowered. Yeah. Then we would have been overpowered. Yeah. We would oh. have been overpowered. Yeah. Um, and the Northern Frontier District, uh, as <laughs> would, we know today, would have a star. Yeah, would, would, would be part of Greater Somalia. Or the whole of Kenya. Or the whole of Kenya, <laughs> absolutely. Who knows? They could have decided to extend all the way, as uh, Idi Amin also wanted to do in in the 1970s. Yeah. yeah. Right. So both the standard and on a day the that we item. we had uh, uh, a winning headline from the standard, we also had a winning headline from Gado. Mm. Yeah. I will leave you with <coughs> a winning cartoon from Gado. I will leave you with this quote. Remember that we are living in perilous times. Yes. So like, we must go back to the Holy Bible. <laughs> And Preach. the book of Hosea 4, 6 says, My people perish from lack of knowledge. Indeed, uh, in, 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 in these kinds of times, uh, you know, we, we need to be armed with knowledge. Yeah. Knowledge, knowledge, knowledge. Yeah. That is what will save us mm. from this coronavirus. Absolutely. Right. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We are also on your TV screens. Find us on Pang Free to Air, Go TV, and Star Times. Have a good evening.